Hi guys, Rob here again with another video. And uh, before I start, this abomination of hair on my head will be cut today. So I'll be getting back to a normal <laughs> Rob cut at some point because I realise I'm rocking this longer look, which a 54 really isn't working for me. But anyway, let's crack on with the drummy stuff today. So uh, if you came to my dramatic masterclass a couple of Mondays ago, and if you did, I know who you are. Thank you for coming. It was a great night and we had uh, good fun. Um, but because my DW kits were elsewhere in other locales, uh, I had to use a kit that I've recently acquired. Um, and I like to say that because I like to think anyone who buys um, or is given or borrows or uses or saves, as I've done, a kit from being put in the cellar or the shed or the garage for another 25 years, it's like a custodian of the kit. So I feel like I'm a custodian of, of this drum set, which basically is a 1967 white satin flame star drum kit. Um, and I'd never really heard of a, a star drum kit before. And the front head on the front makes it look like it's, um, you know, a Christmas 1974 drum set <laughs> with the star logo on it. So that had to come off straight away. Um, but it's, I don't even know what the shells are. I need to do some research. I've only had it a little while, but the, the day that I received it, I took it out on a jazz gig that evening in um, Sirencester, gigging with Paul Jeffries. Um, and uh, it was amazing. It was such a lovely kit, so responsive. Um, and I've got it here and I'm just going to, you know, I'm not going to take all the heads off it and do lots of chat about it because I'm not that sort of drum reviewer or anything. I just wanted you to see it because some people have noticed that I've put it in my photos on Instagram or it's been in the background, you know, I try and do those arty portrait shots and all that portrait mode kind of thing um, with album sleeves and bits, which, you know, and people ask, do I listen to those albums? Yes, I do. I am listening to them. I'm not just propping them up to look good. I am listening to them. Um, and I've always wanted a, a white satin flame kit. Now I have a Gretsch kit that has to be shipped over from the States and I'm going to be sorting that out reasonably soon, you know, funds allowing and everything for the import duties and taxes and everything. It's like, well, but that's a whole other thing. But the reason I mention that is because Slingerland and Gretsch I love and I need to get a Slingerland kit at some point. I've got loads of their student snares over there, as you know, I'm mad on those for some reason. I just dig them. But I've always wanted a white satin flame kit and Gretsch obviously famously made white satin flames as did Slingerland. So uh, it was always a question of funds and being able to afford the right thing at the right time with the family and, you know, self-employed and all that business. And anyway, this kit came up and I thought, I've got to take this kit, you know. I want to be the custodian of this set because one, it's a bit of an anomaly to me, Star Drums, which I now know Atama Drums, basically, the early, the earliest 60s version of Atama drum set. Um, and I've always wanted a Satin Flame drum kit, as Simon Wagstaff well knows. I drool over his collection of like 10 billion Slingerland satin flame kits because they're all beautiful and just look and sound amazing. And I nearly bought one a long time ago, but it's a long story. But anyway, so he knows how desperate I've been just to get one. And when I saw this kit was in white satin flame, I just had to pick it up. So here we go. This is uh, the bass drums in a case over there. I'm not going to get the bass drum out, but uh, here's the kit. Well, I say the kit, here's the 12 inch Tom. You can see the badge there, star. Um, it says star, finest quality, made in Japan. Deep Purple album. Um, and anyone who knows me, I'm quite tactile and I love being able to do this on the drums. <laughs> anyway, I just love that white satin finish. And many years ago, when I was on the road with uh, the 80s band, uh, Modern English, who was still going, fantastic new wave band. Uh, I went to Milwaukee and I went to a drum store that isn't there anymore. Um, and I bought my first student snares. That's where it all started, really. And one of them, they're all Slingerlands. And one of them was in this white satin flame. And uh, when I got back, I had it for four or five years and then sold it stupidly because, you know, you know, young guy, you need the money, blah, blah, blah. And I wish I'd never sold it. So if anyone's got a white satin flame Slingerland student model out there, snare drum, I would love to. I know it won't be the same. Things are never the same. Um, but I'd love to pick another one up. But that started my whole love affair to White Satin Flame, really. And it's just an amazing finish. And this one isn't in bad condition. The Tom Holder's a bit funky. But um, I put it on a snare stand anyway, so it's cool. Damper's really cool, though. Big, chunky damper, which works really well, considering. Much better than, I think, the baseball bat ones on the 
the Ludwig ones. Uh, and uh, I think Sling Lamb are using uh, sort of the, the screw type ones that pop up to the head. They work well anyway, so, and I can't think what Gretsch we're using, but, um, but yeah, this works really well. It's a good system. I dig it. I've had no issues with it so far. As I say, it's not, this isn't going to be a touring kit or anything. This is very much something that I just wanted to tick off the list and to have. Um, and uh, the star heads, the, I'll show you the logo, look at that. Yeah, not the best logo in the world, is it really? If you can imagine that bigger on a 20 inch bass drum, I had to get rid of it. Um, but yeah, it's in reasonably good condition. You know, it's got a few knocks and scrapes and it does this sort of thing, you know. Um, it's not pixelated, but I don't know what you call it, but it kind of has that wearing on, on the finish. Um, but on, and you know, as I say, these star heads are pretty cheap and pretty nasty. So I had to put a, a Remo on the top, a Remo M Pro, which works really well. It's tuned quite down, down at the moment. Um, and not perfectly in tune, but um, yeah, it just is really wicked. And I, I love 12 inch rack toms. I mean, 13s are cool and I've got two or three. I've got a 13 on my Shelly Man uh, Leedy, which is over there. And I've got a 13 on my Ludwig Super Classic, which is over there. But you know, 12 inch, and also with my DW kit as well. But um, yeah, I just wanted to have it in there 12 and this happened to be 12, 14 and the 20 inch base, which is perfect. So there's your floor tom. Lovely. Good legs work well, but yeah, a few things, you know, the wrap and stuff. Yeah, coming undone a little bit, but hey, it's been loved and I dig it, you know? Again, the same sort of uh, spider webbing, do they call it, on the finish when it does that weird stuff. I've heard Steve Maxwell and also Tristan Head talk about it, that, you know, um, at Dramatic, Tristan's mentioned this sort of webbing and whatever. Um, as I say, as when I watch, you know, the Steve Maxwell videos, because I love those too. There's a bit more of a funky mark there, look. That's, uh, that's all right, you know. Again, we've got the star head on the bottom. I'm a star. Uh, and uh, the emperor on the top, which uh, I, I put on the other day for the masterclass. Lovely. And what I found, just working with this 12 and 14, and I've done a few of my um, YouTube shorts, which I also ping up on the, uh, um, Instagram and Facebook, you'll see that I've used a DW bass drum but with these toms on one of the things I did a couple of weeks ago, because I really wanted to try them out. So tuning wise, the 12 and the 14, they can go up in tuning, they can do mid, they can go low, which is quite cool. When they go low, they're not as responsive, but if I put some moon gel or something on there, you know, just in a few of the cor corners, it's a drum, it's round. <laughs> but on some of the, two of the sides or something, or one and a half, or sometimes three, if I'm gonna go really low, it takes away any wanted farting sounds or anything like that. Um, the 12 as well, it's really cool, really responsive. Love the 12 inch Tom. And I'd like to try it with uh, Remo Clears on the bottom or even Remo Emperors or Remo Ambassadors on the bottom. Because that, as we all know with tuning and experimenting, that'll change the sound as well. Also pinstripes. We could see what a pinstripe sounds like and an Emperor Clear on the top, because I love those too for slightly heavier sounds. The bass drum's over here in a case, I won't get that out, but it's pretty cool. Um, it obviously had a ride cymbal arm attachment at some point, um, or rather had the symbol on the arm at some point and somebody took it off. But that bracket is really thick and sturdy. It's like, you know, thou shall not pass. It's really, <laughs> really heavy duty. And the only thing I don't really dig about it is the, the bass drum legs. They don't sort of come out like the sort of uh, Ludwig ones do. They come out and they don't come out lower down the shell like some of the Ludwig and Gretches used to do. It comes out sort of maybe in a normal place, I guess. It's like a third of the shell or something. Um, no, less than that. Anyway, it, it comes out two lugs up or something, but they just go straight out. Uh, the amount of times people have walked past the kit and tripped over because the span is so <laughs> it's such a, a long reach on them. It's a little bit annoying. If they'd just put them further down the shell and kept them more lower to the ground rather than being sort of halfway up or whatever and then coming out. So you've got your sort of head, the bass drum sort of head there and the legs are like, shoo. <laughs> anyway, it's a cool drum kit and I just wanted to to chat about it and let you know what this thing is. So it's a star, and I suppose they did Star Classic, didn't they? And um, Superstar, or no, Star something or other. And I've never been a massive fan of Tama. It's not that I don't think they're any good. It's just uh, the lugs and the look, and I suppose those 80s sort of power toms things they had, they just never really, I never really dug it. They're Billy Cobham, one of my favorite drummers, John Blackwell, one of my favorite drummers. 
has used Tama, and I'm sure there's some other Tama drummers, Stuart Copeland, of course. Um, but yeah, there's just something about it whenever I've tried them out in the shop. But the shells, um, something about the shells, I'm sure I'm going to get lots of comments now, which is fine. Please share them with me uh, about the, the build quality in the shell of what it is um, and and the the way the uh, the beveling edges and all that, the bearing edges. It's uh, very different to um, a Ludwig uh, or the DW I've got and the Shelly Man and the Gretsch when it gets here. I've not heard that. And I'm always looking for that. And the fact that it's in a, in a, in a size and a colour that I love, it's just like I want to be the custodian of this drum kit. No snare with it, unfortunately, but maybe that's a good thing. Because again, I've tried many Tama snares back in the day when I used to work at Assembly Music and I never really got into Tama snares that much. Um, but another thing that uh, came with it all was <laughs> there were some cases, not for the bass drum. I had to get that from Tristan, just a sort of soft case, but an old 12 inch Premier case, which I thought was quite natty and quite cool. So that's pretty ace. I love these old fashioned cases. I can't remember what this material's called, but I'm sure someone on the comments below will let me know. But yeah, I, used to, I remember in the, um, the 80s, they used to have like Premier emblazoned across it and they were uh, red and with, and with black um, rivets or whatever these things are, popper things. Uh, and they were cool. I remember having a cymbal case and a, I think a snare case or a tom case that my dad got me. And there's also, so I guess that's from the time or maybe this, the 70s, just afterwards, early 70s. And also this leather case, which is padded top and bottom, uh, but with a really nice red, whoa, nice red inner finish, which is really cool. It smells like it's been in someone's garage since 1967, but that's okay. I mean, it's been in the house for a while. It smells leathery though, which is good as well. So it's got to be good quality. Hi guys, so I'm back again with a fresh haircut. Fresh glasses that belong to my girlfriend um, and different lighting because the time has changed in the day. But anyway, um, I basically run out of phone memory. So the phone cut out just as I was telling you about these leather cases. But um, anyway, I'm off to a rehearsal in a minute with Little Men. Uh, we've got some new tunes coming for a gig that we're doing just after Christmas, which I'll talk about at some point. And later this week, I'm going to be talking more about the amazing Steve White Clinic that's coming up with me and him at the Swan Theatre in Yeovil on December the 9th. Tickets are available. Uh, and it's all through the amazing guys in Yeovil at Drum Dog, who I did the, uh, under the influence of Buddy Rich and Ian Pace masterclasses. And of course, the Ian Pace one was just last Sunday. And thanks all for tuning in. So I better get my skates on. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you like the drum kit. It's kind of cool, isn't it? It's a different thing. And you may see it in some other clips. And I've, I might record with it at some point, but I'm sure you'll see on my social media all about that as well. So have a groovy day. Thanks for tuning in. Any comments about this drum kit, please put in the comments below and like and subscribe and share this to other people that you think, you know, might be into this drum kit or indeed the sort of content that I talk about. So take care guys, have a wicked day and I shall see you soon.